Welcome to all the classic car enthusiasts. Um, I just wanted to put this quick video up. Um, we've repaired the bottom of this, this door, which I'll show you in a minute when I pick the camera up. But before we put this on, we put the door skin through the English wheel, which I'll, get, I'll take you over and show you. Um, and we nipped it just a little bit too tightly, and when we rolled it, um, the English wheel doesn't need to be too tight. Um, you know, you don't put a lot of pressure on it. And as you wheel it, obviously you're flattening the metal out, and uh, there was a very bad crease in here, which we got out, but we, I think I overwheeled it, and, and what's happened is it created a little bit of a lump there. Now, obviously, worst case scenario is we'd have to cut it uh, to ease the, 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 the tension on it, and then re-weld it back together, which I don't want to do if possible. So, uh, this, uh, uh, make this welder I have, this spot welder, it has a facility on it with this gun with a, with a carbon uh, tip and what you can do is you can heat the metal uh, red hot and then use cold water to, to, uh, to quench it so basically what you're doing is you're shrinking the metal so I'll just do a quick uh, so you can see in fact it's gone down considerably already it was very bad this so what I'll do is I'll do it and then I'll show you what, what, how, we, how we do it so Basically, you just go to the affected part where, where the problem is, and then just. And you'll see in a minute, it'll start to glow. You see that red ember now? You could do this with, you could do this with heat, but it would take a lot longer to get the heat into it. So then I. You can see it's kind of heating and quenching it. So again, the nice thing about this is it doesn't damage the skin. And the problem with heat when you're doing it with a with a flame is your uh, you have to have it on for quite a long time, and so the heat could go out, dissipates out. From the, to the to the sides, whereas with this you're getting it right on the spot where you need it. So this is a very handy little tool. This um, I have used it on a on, on twice before on another uh, material where we had to shrink it. Um, I think it was on the mini we used it, but it does get extremely hot. You can see it glowing red there. So I'll uh, I'll turn this off and I'll show you the the, the machine. So uh, I, sh I showed this earlier. There is actually a uh, hydraulic. Um, th this is a. Uh, this is also a spot welder. You can put a spot welder in. Here and you can do a single spot weld from one side, which is great because it means you can go wherever you want. And it also has a, uh, a pneumatic air-operated set of jaws. Excuse me. Set of jaws, and uh, uh, and you can do a double spot weld with it as well. The unfortunate thing with this machine, though, is is the amperage is very big. And the average uh, domestic uh, amperage for the breakers is much lower. So I can only use this in a friend's workshop, the double one. The single one's no problem at all, but it welds brilliantly. Um, so, and you can obviously you can do all, change all your settings here to whatever size you want. And then this is the time lapse that you want for it. So, yeah, so basically, as I said, what we did was while this, while this bottom was off, uh, we put it in and we and we rolled it backwards and forwards. There was a very bad In fact, you can just see it there Now the problem is is we can't get into that So we're gonna have to just lead load it and it's right by a, by the door edge That's the actual edge of the door there we, we can knock it out a little bit But you if you try to knock that out, you'll probably pop it the other way So with that depth in it, we can lead load it and as you can see there This is now starting to come better. Obviously we have to treat it uh, a few times. It's not just a it's not just a one-off deal, um, but you can see you can see now it's getting it's getting better. Now you can see where that gap is there, and that's what's wrong. Is this? So we could relieve the tension by cutting it, but that's a lot of work. This is a much better method. Um, yeah. So what we did was we took it over to this uh, machine here. This is the English wheel, 
And like I say, what, what I did wrong really was I put too much, too much tension in this wheel. Um, you can see this is how it tightens and, and so on. And uh, I just put a little bit too much tension in that wheel. And, uh, and, that's, uh, and that's what caused the problem. So as my fault, I'm not, I'm not, uh, have a lot of experience with wheeling, so I only use it really to get uh, to pre-wheel uh, steel plates where we're going to put a bead in it with a speeding machine. So uh, that's that's a way of doing it. If you've got a bad crease, you can then heat it and try and shrink it. Heat and shrink, heat shrink, and you could do the same thing for actually getting rusty bolts off. Um, uh, we call it heating and quenching which is basically the same thing so with the mini we started uh, the wheels are coming tomorrow about uh, so tomorrow's video you'll see the wheels on it they'll be finished at two o'clock tomorrow afternoon and uh, we'll get them on it so we, you can see what it looks like when all the with the wheels painted up which I think is going to look really really nice you can see inside it's looking much much better now this is what day two two, two days to be honest the first day we we, we 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 kind of um, we're getting a, a bit of a problem with it, and we and I looked at Tom's on Tom's video on uh, Total Car Reviews, and I noticed he started at the back, so we did the same thing. The problem with it is you need so many pairs of hands because uh, you, you've got to pull all the tension in it, and it takes time to do that. Um, but you can see it's looking it's looking really nice. So I think in the next day or so we should be able to get it in and then start sealing it and putting all the rubbers back into the doors and so on and so forth. But, uh, but it's definitely getting there. It's, it's much, much nicer now. But it does take time. The one thing while you're doing these headliners is this is the original one that was in it here. And one thing you will notice is the one that Tom had had was really nicely cut here. They, 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 they were cut kind of uh, at this kind of angle down here. Now the cloth ones are not like that. You have to cut them a bit and then re-glue them. Um, so I really like the, the one that he'd got. The other thing is if you measure from, from one seam here to here, you'll find that the new one is at about a centimeter or you know three quarters of an inch, whatever, uh, difference. And this is the amount of stretch you have to put into them. Obviously this is the old one. So this is, this is so for instance, this is like 20, um, five or, or um, 26 across here, 26 centimeters. On the car, it was 25. On the, on the car, it was uh, 25. So it has to stretch a centimeter. That's quite a lot, and this is why it takes so long to get the uh, thing stretched out. So um, yeah, but you can see that was a that was pretty crappy. The one that was in it. Um, but yeah, so. The only advice I would say is you're going to have to be patient with it. I was looking back on Tom's videos and I noticed that from the days that he posted the videos anyway to, to when he got it finished was in excess of three weeks. Now that's probably obviously due to work commitments and whatever, uh, but it just shows how much of it, how much the tension takes time to or, or to get the, the creases out of it. But like I say, it's coming on. You can see just over there we're, we've got to get all that sorted out, but it's coming. So. Hopefully tomorrow you'll see it down on its proper wheels and uh, and we'll go from there. So that's it for today. So if you're interested, these machines, this is a company called RP Tools. Um, and uh, there's some really good bits of things with this. We've got uh, a slide hammer system on here. Um, you can see it there. And this is great because what you do with this is if you've got a dent, um, you can just... Uh, Press the press the button on the uh, on the pistol. You can attach it. So, for instance, say you've got a dent there, it'll it'll create a an arc, and then you can smack it on the slide hammer, push the slide hammer backwards and forwards, and you pull the dent out. And then all you do is turn it, and it comes straight off. And then you do it again, bang, turn it, bang, turn it, and you can pull out dents with it. It's absolutely brilliant. We've used it already, so uh, very good bit of kit. So. And there's quite a other, lot of other different things with it, like, um, for instance, this. These are uh, springs, and basically what you do is you weld, you weld them. Uh, you, you put that thing in between each one of those, and then you can, you've got like um, um, six or seven hooks that go in, and you can pull them, 
pull a bigger surface area rather than one. Anyway, thanks for watching in and bye for now. Bye.